The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support witch hunts or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take care and leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. Uh, did you get him? Yeah, I caught the elusive Ronald McDonald, locked him up in his special cell. Did we get a confession about the, uh, you know, arson? Yes, he confirmed that he was indeed the person behind the fire you created. It required a lot of Chinese water torture, though. And the time space ruptures? Got that through cock and ball torture. Damn, and I thought I was the police. Look, you do the criminal acts, I fabricate evidence to cover it up. Anyway, speaking of cock and ball torture. Right, rest of the interrogation, hold on. Well, alright, I'm gonna fucking wear his skin like a goddamn snuggie! Sinnoh confirmed. Let's talk about it. So, what I want to do is go over the details on the website and give my thoughts as we go, because overall, I'm positive. I'm down with these games, but I have some concerns. You can't fool me with your red hair, furry. The title of this video clearly states this is a review of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pur- Fuck, bitch. Fuck shit, crazy diamond. Unless you want to tell us you can't read, in which case we have other problems here. And thank God my associate could read, because we would have been up Shit's Creek without a furry. And thank goat my associate could read, because we would have been up Shit's Creek without a butt plug. So the Sinnoh region of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Experience the nostalgic story from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl games in an adventure reborn on the Nintendo Switch system. Is this an illegal act of cloning? Yeah. And it's also not asking me if I'm a top or a bottom. Unfortunately for you, my purfury, my sexuality is power. I mean, the furry community is like the Tupperware cabinet, all bottoms and no tops. Adventures in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl will take place in the Sinnoh region. Rich in nature, with Mount Coronet towering at its heart, Sinnoh is a land with many myths passed down through the ages. You'll visit many different locations in the Sinnoh region while striving to become the champion of the Pokemon League. So you can read? What was all this false advertising? That's illegal! You see, my fellow mollusk of arsenic justice, this is his cover. The title tells us everything we need to know to crack this case wide open. But let's hear the rest of his plea while I remember what we're talking about. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the art style. A lot of people I've seen have been upset with how the games look. I like it. And when I saw this, I was like, you know what? It's weird. It's not what people were expecting. But again, I dig it. I'm down with this because- See? He's admitting to his crimes! He's from another timeline! One where Pokemon fans are content with their games and don't complain! That's exactly how the statement is worded! So this slip-up is all the proof we need! He burns! There's a timeline where that exists? GO BACK TO THE REDDIT DIMENSION TIME THIEF HACK! I would have liked to see an art style change like what we saw with Pokemon X and Y into Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. How Pokemon Sword and Shield mixed things up compared to Pokemon uh, Sun and Moon. Also, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I really, really like how Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee looks. So when we do this, I think that's fancy. I think that's a pretty clever way of giving us the Sinnoh remix. You know, Game Freak always has to surprise us. What a surprise they're giving us indeed. A whole different company. And that different company could be anyone. Sony, Nintendo, 2K, me, Insomniac, Aaron Tempest, Sony. Wait, is giving a company as a surprise human trafficking? Thank God we're not in Siberia, or that would have been an offensive punishable by... Playing. They've said so in interviews, so just kind of giving us a 3D, 2D Pokemon game as a remake, that's pretty cool. So the original story has been faithfully reproduced. And that's where we're getting into problems, because then that kind of takes this out of remake territory. That's over the border, right? Thing? Can we punish Sinnoh when it crosses the remake border? I don't fucking know laws! I'm just a snail with no snail, and I just want to burn this furry to justice. We can make anything illegal if we just come there as a group and burn this one guy for like 34 days continuously. It's fine. More into remaster territory. This is effectively just 3D Diamond and Pearl. Gastro Haltman, is this his confession for, you know, the thing? 
Yes, we can finally move into phase 273. And then the way that Sinnoh remakes could have tied back in with Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon Sword and Shield are my second favorite Pokemon games, and then if Sinnoh remakes got like the same quality of life as HeartGold Soul Silver, they could have very easily just been my favorite Pokemon games. I was really looking forward to the wild area in Sinnoh on a traditional Pokemon game. So what you're asking for isn't Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes, what you're asking for is Pokemon Gun, where Gun Mario. Look, if you want a gun, there's no shame in that. Dude, all you gotta do is go through a background check. So I don't know how they'll feel about giving guns to time travelers. Wait, did we drop the time travel bomb too early? Wasn't that phase 187? Did we skip phase 8? I'm a little disappointed in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, as well as Pokemon Legends, because I feel like they split up what could have been the best Pokemon game ever, and then not making this Let's Go feels weird as well, because these remakes include easy to understand player-friendly conveniences of the modern Pokemon series, plus up-close and personal Pokemon battle scenes. So, that just kind of sounds like what they did with Pokemon Let's Go. They made it to where it's easy to get into, they made it very fr player-friendly, easy to understand, kind of softened up the original Pokemon games a bit. So, they're going to do that to the original game, so not making it 100% faithful, and then we didn't get Pokemon Let's Go Sinnoh instead. I have lost track of what jurisdiction we're in. If you want, let's go God and Jesus, just pull it out of your own ass, time traveler. This is why I'm also kind of worried that Game Freak, they listen to the fans way too much. All right, listen, so the lore is that the red half of the purple, so Verlissify is Neko Koda's Heartless, and that led him to being a Nazi, and so he's trying to obtain a monopoly on time travel so he can become the ultimate Nazi by killing Hitler. We, we don't have too much time, and my partner's really amused for some reason, so I'm just gonna have to fill in the plot until we get to it. I love you all except for the ones who like feet. Rot in prison for your crimes, forehead. So you see... Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and Pokemon Sword and Shield are amazing games. I feel like Game Freak took the criticisms way too hard and we got two lesser Pokemon games because, because of it. Pokemon Narcolepsy isn't even out yet, so can you have some dignity for like seven nanoseconds? I'm losing more agency by the second. I feel like Pokemon Legends is worse because of the criticism of Pokemon Sword and Shield, and then the hate from Pokemon Let's Go scared Game Freak into not making Pokemon Let's Go Sinnoh when it seems like... It could have been what they wanted to do, like how they could have delivered this and it would have been awesome. The only thing that scared Game Freak was Temtem. After that, their only worry is hiding the bodies. Whether you played Pokemon Diamond and Pearl back in the day, or you're encountering these games for the first time, there's something for everyone to enjoy. That sounds just like the Pokemon Let's Go pitch, so yeah, that kind of gets weird. That's, That's every, every single, single pitch. pitch. Have you seen a football? However, I think it's really cool that even if this is just exactly Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and it seems that way, maybe some slight story tweaks, like we saw with Pokemon Let's Go. There's a little bit extra added in, but some of the keywords here, like the faithful reproduction. Hold on a second. Faithful reproduction? Wait a minute, that sounds to me like something that could be not or could, could may or may not consider some sort of criminal offense or a crime. Gastro Tons, what exactly is the charge? It's uh, I saw the tip of my gun, Mario. Arson? Found the answer. You won. This is nice. However, I still like the idea of the games because I could just play Generation 4 again. It's been so long since I've played Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and I never like replayed the story or reset my save file because I had all my competitive Pokemon on it. So yeah, we're over a decade removed from that. It'll probably feel pretty much like a new game. I haven't even watched speedruns. I didn't I haven't downloaded any illegal ROMs or emulated Pokemon Diamond and Pearl or anything. Oh really? That's a likely story. Yeah, uh play the clip. So yeah, it's gonna be a pretty good experience for me. I haven't spoiled myself. How could you unless you were a time traveler? Confess, furry! To be fair, you could debunk this by saying that Verlissify is practically known for shitting the bed. I'm one of those people that'll watch a movie once with a few rare exceptions. I never understood the people that'll watch a movie and then immediately need to rewatch it and then they'll watch it a few weeks later or even a month later and maybe even like a year later. I need to have pretty much forgotten everything about it, unless it's my favorite movie, to want to watch it again. This has nothing to do with you being a Nazi time traveler. Just shut up about how allergic to fun you are for seven seconds and just admit to your crimes, you piece of dry potato. We all watch movies. You're not special. We haven't even gotten to the actual confession. This counts as assault. Kind of the same with, like, I'm pretty much the same with Pokemon games. Like, I don't know why you need to go and play a Pokemon game again. People watch your content. 
And when it comes to Sinnoh, I'm, I was super hyped. Like, I've wanted Sinnoh remakes for years. I've been super bullish on Sinnoh remakes, but not for the story, but because of the features. The Underground is pretty much everything I wanted in Diamond and Pearl remakes, as well as Ball Capsules and Contests are really cool. Okay, so you know, like... Oh, fuck, you're right. And then bringing it back to the competitive as well. And another big question I have about the games is how serious of main series games are these supposed to be? Since this isn't developed by Game Freak, I'm also wondering, like, is this not going to be where our competitive goes? Is Pokemon Sword and Shield going to be the VGC or the Play Pokemon for this year? <sighs> Joke's on you! We're the police, so the only cock and ball torture we partake in is brutal warfare. And I don't even know where we land on 2022. Your mother. Yes! <claps> Fucking got him! Because 2022 is gonna be Pokemon Legends, but it's early, so it's kind of spin off y, but it's not spin off because it's a main series. So it's like a new main series, but it's detached like Pokemon Let's Go. It's also another reason why I don't like Pokemon Legends, because it complicates things anymore. So are we looking at Generation 9 for Pokemon 2022, which is kind of what everyone expected now that we have Sinnoh Remix? So are we just outdated? Are we kind of screwed? Is this going to be reduced decks with just generation four decks? The word salad you have just served could be considered a hate crime. How do you plead guilty? I don't know, I've never been guilty. Well, let us find out. That salad pun you served could be considered a hate crime. How do you plead guilty? With my mouth. I like the Pokemon Mansion. I like the Pokemon Swarms, I believe they were called. Also, I'm, I'm pretty much, like, I'm pretty much down. See a therapist. Just stand up, forehead. That also means that Pokemon Chaining should be back in, which sounds really cool to me. And the Verse Recorder, so replaying trainer battles. That's awesome. Child abuse is not awesome. Come with me. Why do you need to chain Pokemon? They're already your slaves, you do- Don't- <laughs> I forgot I wrote, don't take a dip shit in the fucking script. <laughs> Why do you need to chain Pokemon? They're already your slaves, you do deck a dipshit! Wait... You know how... We're Pokemon... From Sinnoh, right? Oh fuck, we weren't supposed to think about that. Why do you guys feel the need to nitpick videos so much? Because, because your, your hair is purple. Anyway, now that we have the account of slavery, we have everything we need to put this furry behind bars. What say you, Gastro Haltman? <sighs> Another arson well snails. Hey, did I ever tell you about that time I fucking hate feet? Maybe? Okay, so like... Alright, so for the stinger this time, we decided, um... Why not do something that's organized instead of just getting a funny person on a mic? <laughs> just <laughs> telling him to be funny. Um, I'm gonna ask, uh, I'm gonna tell Avi three fun facts about... Suda 51 7 man pile up press B to turn around adventure, otherwise known as Killer 7. And here's the thing I'm gonna say three statements. It's, it's two truths and a lie. I'm gonna say three statements. Uh, two of them. I was gonna say three of them are true. No, two of them are true. One of them is a lie. <laughs> two of them are true. Three of them are lies. They're all gonna be fun facts about the different Smiths, okay? Alright, here we go. And they, these aren't spoilers. These, like, don't... Like, like I, they kind of are, but these don't get explained in-game at all. Right. Got it. Okay. So, number one is about our favorite 14-year-old blind kid, <laughs> Con Smith. Good, you're um, starting with the blind kid. Con Smith was a former guitar player who played really well because he could still hear good, even though he was blind. <laughs> okay. And that's Suda51's explanation, is that he can hear really good. <laughs> um... The other one is that Dan, Dan Smith shares a name with lead singer and primary songwriter and founder of British rock band Bastille. Okay. So that's, that's the Dan Smith one. He shares a name with the Pompeii guy. <laughs> um, and, then, and then the third one is that part of Kaede Smith's ba backstory. Uh, Kaede Smith, by the way, is basically Tara Strong. 
Tara Strong the murderer. The... Tara Strong is one of the, the killer seven. Yeah, no, it's 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 don't. If I had a nickel for every time Suda Fifty One made Tara Strong a killer, I'd have two nickels, which isn't weird, <laughs> but, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. So part of Kaede's backstory is that. She was killed by her own brother after her brother became a liberal. <laughs> okay, that's the line. Like, that's the explanation, is that he joined the liberal party and then killed her. <laughs> you think, okay, you think that one's the lie? Um, okay, hold on. No! No, the first one's the lie! Wait, the, the one about Khan Smith. Yeah! Khan's not a guitar player. <laughs> no, that, you're right. That's the lie. <laughs> yeah! I fucking knew it! I was like, wait a minute, it's sort of if he was not that stupid. <laughs> the, the, the one about Kaede being killed by her liberal brother, though. That was <laughs> I thought immediately, I was like, wait a second, that can't be true. <laughs> No, oh. you got it. You did it. I did it. The one I prepared 